Welcome to day 25 of the 30 day my D for SOC analyst challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you'll have successfully integrated OS Ticket into your tech stack, and we'll confirm this by sending a test alert into OS Ticket. Let's get started. To get started, you want to head over to your control panel for OS Ticket, and then you want to head over to your admin panel by clicking on admin at the top right corner. And then you want to click on manage and select API. From here, click on add new API key. And for the IP address, because our OS Ticket server and our Elk server are in the same virtual private cloud, I can now put in my private IP address of my Elk server. If they were not in the same VPC, then instead of using a private IP, I would need to enter in my public IP. In case you forgot what your private IP was for your Elk server, you can head over to Vulture and click on the My Defer Dash Elk, and then click on Settings. On the left hand side, click on VPC 2.0, and we have our address right here which is 172.31.0.3. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'll copy that, head over to OS Ticket, and paste that in here. For the services, I am going to check Can Create Tickets. And then for your internal notes, you can add whatever you want, but I'll just say My DFIR 30-Day Elastic Connector. Click on Add Key, and now we have our API key. So this API key is what we're going to be using on Elastic to begin integrating OS Ticket. I'll copy that out and open up my notepad and paste that in here. Type in API key, save this here. Now you wanna head over to your Elastic, click on the hamburger icon, scroll all the way down. Under management, you wanna select stack management. And from here under alerts and insights, click on connectors. Now we can click on create connector. By default, unfortunately, with the free license, you cannot use APIs. So what that means is that we'll need to enable our free 30-day trial. And we can do this by clicking on manage license and then select start a 30-day trial and start my trial. Now I have the capability to configure APIs and have a bunch of third-party integrations. I do also have the ability to isolate a host if I am using Elastic Defend, which is Elastic's EDR. Now on the free license, you can just install Elastic EDR, but you won't have the capability to isolate the host remotely if you do not have a subscription. Now that I have my trial, let's go back over to connectors and click on create connector. And all of this is available to me now. So if we wanted to, we can just send an email whenever we get an alert. We could execute CrowdStrike response actions if we had CrowdStrike, Microsoft Teams, open up a ticket in Jira, send it over to PagerDuty, Slack, and many more. But in my case, I'll use a simple webhook. So I'll click on webhook. And then for the connector name, I'll name it as OS Ticket. And this will be a post request. So my URL for the post request is going to be HTTP, the IP address of my OS ticket, go under my vulture because I forgot what the IP address was, and it is this one right here, 155 ending in 117. Back to my connector, paste that in, forward slash OS ticket, forward slash upload, forward slash API, forward slash tickets dot XML. Just like that. Next, under authentication, I will select none, and I will add an HTTP header. For the key, I am going to do x-api-key. And for the value, let's put in our API key value. So we'll copy that out and paste it in here. And then I'll click on save and test. Now we'll say create an action and provide me with a body. Now you might be wondering, how do I know what to input for this body? Well, thankfully, OS Tickets GitHub does have an example that you can use, and I'll provide the link down below. So this right here is OS Ticket's GitHub page specifically for the tickets. And if I were to scroll down, we do see an XML payload example. We can copy this out, head over to connectors, and paste this in. If you're following along with the giveaway, this right here is the important part. Under this subject, I want you to change this to my DFIR-30-day-challenge. 
dash and your handle, AKA your username, which in my case is Steven Roth. So again, change the subject to my DFIR dash 30 day challenge dash handle, AKA your username. And then I'll click on run. And we do get an error saying error calling webhook request failed timeout of 60,000 milliseconds. What this is telling me is that there is a network connection issue. To troubleshoot, let's open up a PowerShell session and I'll SSH into our Elk server. Go over to my Vulture. What is the IP here? 216 root at 216 and copy the password. Once we're in our Elk server, let's type in IP space A and I can see my IP address as 172.31.0.3, which is my private IP address. Let's try pinging our OS ticket, which is on 172.31.0.5, I believe. And I get destination host unreachable. Interesting. So let's take a look at my OS ticket server here. And looking at the VPC 2.0, I do see that it is 172.31.0.5. And since I am already RDP'd into this OS ticket server, what I'll do is open up command prompt and type in IP config. Now I do notice that I see the public IP, but I do not see a private IP of 172. Instead, I see a 169 address. To change this, I'll open up the start menu and type in control and select control panel. From here, click on network and internet, click on view status and task, and select change adapter settings. Now we wanna change the adapter that has the 169 address. If we take a look at the name, we can see that the ethernet adapter ethernet instance zero is the one that has 169. Zero two has my public IP address. So if I were to go to my adapters, this one right here is zero and the second one is zero two. So zero is the one that has our 169 address and is the one that I want to change. So I'll right click this and click on properties. I will double click internet protocol version four and then select use the following IP address. I'll type in 172.31.0.5. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 because it is a slash 24. And I'll leave the DNS and everything else blank. Click on okay and okay. Now let's type in IP config again. And this time I do have my 172 address. Now let's minimize my remote desktop session Head over to my Elk instance, and now let's try pinging 172.31.0.5. Beautiful, it now works. Let's go back over to my Elastic connector and let's rerun our test. Now, again, since I am on this page, if you're following along with the giveaway, do make sure you type in the mydfir 30 day challenge handle. If you aren't following the giveaway, then you can ignore all of that. I'll click on run test. Oh, I just realized actually. While I was waiting for this, I need to head over to configuration and I need to change this to my private IP address of my OS ticket since I am doing everything internal. So I'll do 172.31.0.5. Now let's try and hit save and run the test. And there you go, test was successful. Ensure the results are what you expect. So let's head over to our OS ticket. Let's click on agent panel at the top right corner. And there is our ticket, my defer 30 day challenge dash Steven rocks. That is super cool. Now we have fully integrated our OS ticket into our elastic. So now anytime our alerts generate from elastic itself, we can then start automatically creating a ticket in OS ticket to start tracking our alerts. And as a reminder, by having a ticketing system, you are now fulfilling one of the A's in the AAA which is accounting slash auditing. Just like that, you are now fully functional. Let's recap what you have done so far in this challenge. You started by spinning up your own Elasticsearch and Kibana instance, spun up two servers, one Windows and one Linux, and you successfully installed an agent on both of them to begin pushing data into your Elasticsearch. You created alerts and dashboards for brute force activity towards SSH and RDP along with identifying a common C2 framework called Mythic. Lastly, you spun up your own ticketing system and integrated this into your tech stack. By doing all of this, you now have your own little SOC environments where you can begin to play around with. 
in the next couple videos, we will shift gears into focusing on how we can start investigating our alerts that we created, starting with our SSH brute force alert. As a reminder, I will be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a free voucher for the MyD for SOC Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me up for grabs. Details are provided in the description down below. If you're an aspiring SOC analyst, I would highly encourage you to participate to level up your practical skills. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.